Did you know that Apple is putting all its foldable display eggs in one basket? According to a new report, Samsung Display will be the only company making the OLED panels for Apple's first ever foldable iPhone. That's right, Samsung beat out both LG Display and BOE from China to win this massive deal. Now this lines up with an earlier report by analyst Jeff Pu, who said Apple and Samsung had already made a deal for foldable OLED panels. It looks like Samsung is not only Apple's biggest rival in smartphones, but also its key display supplier. Let's talk specs because we've got some juicy details. A well-known leaker from China, Digital Chat Station, shared some information on Weibo. The iPhone Fold is expected to feature a 7.76-inch internal display with a resolution of 1920 by 2713 pixels, giving it a pixel density of 428 ppi. For comparison, the iPhone 16 Pro Max has a sharper display with 460 ppi, but the difference might not even be noticeable to most users. Now the outer screen or the cover display will also be made by Samsung and is said to measure 5.4 inches with a resolution of 1422 by 288 pixels, bringing the pixel density close to 460 ppi. That's pretty much the same as the iPhone 13 mini, so the folded phone should feel compact and pocketable. And here's something cool. The main 7.76 inch screen is expected to come with an under display front camera, while the outer screen will have a hole punch lens. This setup means you'll be able to take selfies and make video calls with either screen, depending on how you're using the phone. Production of these foldable panels is set to begin either late this year or early next year. Apple is aiming to start full-scale production of the iPhone Fold around the same time. They're also working hard to reduce or eliminate the crease in the middle of the foldable display, which has been one of the biggest complaints with other foldables on the market. Now let's talk about the price. The iPhone Fold is expected to cost around US$2,000, which would make it one of the most expensive iPhones ever. That's even more than Samsung's latest foldables. Speaking of Samsung, even though they're supplying the displays, Apple's entry into the foldable market is going to make things tougher for them. Samsung currently holds 40% of the global foldable phone market, but Chinese brands have been eating into that share fast. And now, with Apple stepping in, Samsung is going to face even more pressure. It's a strange situation. On one hand, Samsung is helping Apple build this device by providing the displays, but on the other hand, they're going to lose sales when some users switch from Galaxy foldables to the iPhone Fold. It's kind of ironic, isn't it? Overall, it's clear that Apple isn't just testing the waters here. By going with Samsung as the sole display supplier and working on advanced tech like under-display cameras and crease reduction, they seem to be taking foldables seriously. We're still a few months away from official reveal, but if production stays on track, we could see the iPhone Fold launch sometime next year. So are you excited about Apple finally releasing a foldable phone? Or do you think it's too late to the party? Let us know what you think in the comments. And if you enjoyed this update, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more tech news just like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Is Apple's first foldable iPhone really going to cost more than a Galaxy Z Fold? Well, if the latest leaks are true, the answer is yes, and not just a little more, at least 200 US dollars more than Samsung's future foldable, the Galaxy Z Fold 8. Now that might not sound too crazy when you're already spending close to two grand on a phone, but it raises a real question. Is it worth paying that much more just for the Apple logo? According to multiple reports, Apple's first foldable iPhone, likely to be called the iPhone 18 Fold, is expected to launch next year. A well-known analyst, Tim Long, says the phone could cost around $2,299 US dollars. That makes it about 20% more expensive than Samsung's latest foldable, the Galaxy Z Fold 6, which currently sells for $1,899 US dollars. So what about the Galaxy Z Fold 8? That's the one Apple will be going head-to-head -head with in 2026. Reports suggest Samsung will stick with the same price for that model too, meaning Apple's foldable will still be at least $200 more expensive when it finally arrives. Another report out of China backs this up. On Weibo, a leaker called Insta Digital also claims Apple's foldable will fall somewhere between $2,100 and $2,300 US dollars. That's right in line with what Tim Long said earlier. So we're now hearing this from two solid sources. So why the high price? Well, Apple is known for premium pricing, but this is also a first generation foldable, which means development costs are higher and there's more risk involved. Foldables are still considered delicate and Apple will want to make sure it's polished and reliable before it hits the market. But here's the thing, Samsung already has years of experience in this space. By the time Apple releases the iPhone 18 Fold, Samsung will be on its eighth generation foldable phone. So Apple is definitely late to the party and charging more right out of the gate could be a hard sell, especially if Samsung keeps offering better value. 
That said, Apple could still pull this off, and here's why. People might look at the iPhone 18 Fold not just as a phone, but also as a mini tablet, if it truly works well as an iPhone and an iPad in one device. Some users might see that $2,300 price tag as a deal. After all, buying an iPhone and an iPad separately could cost even more. And let's not forget one interesting detail. Samsung is actually helping Apple here. Reports say Samsung will be supplying the foldable OLED screens for Apple's foldable iPhone. That's right, even if the iPhone 18 Fold outsells the Galaxy Z Fold 8, Samsung will still benefit from every single unit Apple ships. Still, pricing is going to be a big factor. The Galaxy Z Fold 6 is already considered expensive, and a lot of people skip it because of that. If Apple's foldable is even more expensive, people might hesitate even more, especially since foldables are often seen as fragile or less durable than standard phones. At the end of the day, it will come down to how good the experience is. If Apple nails it, seamless design, reliable performance, and great battery life, some people will be more than willing to pay that premium. But for others, especially those just curious about foldables, price might be the deal breaker. So what do you think? Would you spend over 2,000 US dollars on a foldable iPhone, or would you stick with a regular phone, or maybe even go with Samsung's foldables? Let us know in the comments, and if you want to stay updated on Apple's foldable plans, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Is Apple really changing the camera design on the iPhone 17 Pro Max? It looks like the answer is yes, and the latest leak gives us our clearest look yet at what could be the most talked about change to the iPhone in years. A new image has surfaced that shows a test case for the iPhone 17 Pro Max, and let's just say the design is already sparking debate. According to this leak shared by a reliable source on X, the iPhone 17 Pro Max might be going with a horizontal camera island, something we haven't seen on any iPhone before. This design spans the entire width of the phone and still keeps the cameras arranged in a triangular layout. But because of this new island shape, the camera bump now looks a lot bigger and more noticeable. For some users, this might feel like a bold welcome change after years of seeing the same camera style. For others, it might take a little time to get used to. Either way, this is not just a small design tweak, it's a big shift. So, what's the reason behind it? Well, it turns out Apple didn't just make this change for the sake of being different. Reports say the new Pro models, including the iPhone 17 Pro Max, will be getting a new 48 megapixel telephoto camera with high resolution. But the camera module is now so big that Apple reportedly had to move things around. That's why the LiDAR scanner, LED flash, and microphone are being pushed toward the edges of the phone. There simply wasn't enough space to keep them in their original position. This camera upgrade also affects the design of the phone cases. The leaked clear case shows a much wider cutout to fit the new horizontal camera island, some case makers are even preparing designs with separate cutouts, one just for the cameras and another for the rest of the components like the flash and later scanner. That's how different this setup is going to be. It's not just the camera that's getting an upgrade either. The iPhone 17 Pro and Pro Max are expected to come with Apple's latest three nanometer chips, which means more speed and better battery efficiency. But here's something even more interesting. Some reports now claim these Pro models might actually jump ahead and use an even more advanced two nanometer chip. If that's true, performance and power efficiency could take a big leap. As to the body of the phone, Apple may be switching things up again. The titanium frame introduced to the iPhone 15 Pro series could be replaced with aluminum sides for the iPhone 17 Pro lineup. Whether that's a weight-saving move or just a cost decision remains unclear. But it's another sign that Apple is willing to shake things up with this year's release. Another big talking point is the iPhone 17 Air, a rumored thinner model that could be joining the iPhone lineup. This version is also said to use the new horizontal camera island. While some think the design feels inspired by the Google Pixel series, reports suggest Apple's decision was more about internal changes rather than copying anyone else. All of the new iPhone 17 models will run iOS 19, which is expected to launch alongside the phones. Apple typically announces its new iPhones in September, and based on how early case makers are already preparing, the leaks are starting to come in faster now. And by the way, don't worry about price hikes just yet.